this video demonstration, I'm going to map out some of the standing wave mode shapes inside a cylindrical cavity with rigid walls. In one of the graduate level courses in theoretical acoustics that I teach at Penn State, we cover the topic of standing waves inside a cylindrical cavity with rigid floor, ceiling, and walls. And while I was teaching this subject, I was reminded of a paper I had read in the American Journal of Physics that investigated the standing wave behavior inside a plastic compact disc container uh, that, that basically behaves as a cylindrical cavity with rigid walls. So I grabbed one of the cylindrical compact disc cavity containers that I have and put a small loudspeaker inside uh, on the base and up against the outside wall and then a tiny microphone into one of the top corners of the cavity so that I could measure its standing wave resonances and find out what the frequencies are for this cavity. I drove the loudspeaker inside the cavity with a source from a frequency analyzer and did a swept sign measurement that sends out a single frequency while measuring the response from the microphone at that same frequency. And I swept from 1500 hertz to 7500 hertz and I found a number of very distinct strong peaks that represent the standing wave behavior inside that cylindrical cavity. So next I'm going to drive the cylinder at each of those resonances individually and try to map out what the mode shapes are inside at those respective frequencies. So here's the setup. I've got the uh, CD case right there, and I'm driving this CD case, I'm driving this cylindrical cavity with a small loudspeaker that's right up against the edge wall, and I'm interrogating the inside with a microphone on a stick that I can move all around different heights in different radii and different angles. I can move it all around to see what's going on inside. So I'm going to put the, put the cavity down and I'm driving it and then I can move the microphone around inside and what I'm going to be doing is I'm watching an oscilloscope trace which has an XY plot and the XY plot is showing the combination of the output signal that's going to the loudspeaker and then the receiving signal from the microphone and I can see a slope relationship that when I cross a node line where the pressure on the inside of the cavity changes phase, the slope of the picture, the slope of the XY plot will change frequency. So we're going to identify a mode shape by looking at where the signal, where the slope of the uh, oscilloscope trace changes sign. So I'm driving the cylinder at about 1672 hertz, 1672, and I am at the, the 110 mode where there is a diameter plane and if I move the microphone around the outside edge, I can see it change from a positive slope to a negative slope. Positive slope all the way around. Negative slope. Back to positive slope. Now I'm driving the cylinder, the cylindrical cavity at 2230 hertz and there is a this is the 011 mode so there are no radial di no nodal diameters there are no circular nodes but there is a plane right about the in the z-axis so if I move the mic up or down Now I'm driving it at 2,780 hertz, and this is the 210 mode. Two nodal diameters, no radial circles except for the outside rigid wall, and no planes in the Z direction. As I go around, the, if I move the microphone around the outside edge, I will see it change phase four times.
driving the cylindrical cavity at 3,390 hertz. I am at the 0, 2, 0 mode, which has no diameters, no planes in the z-direction, but it has one circular node uh, at a radius midway between the center and the outside edge. So if I take and scan same height, but just simply move the microphone inside to outside, from the outside edge, it's negative phase, center is positive phase. Driving it at 3,542 hertz, I am driving it at the 2-1-1 mode. So now there are two diameters, and there is one plane in the Z direction. So if I go around the outside edge, I will see the phase change four times. One, two, three... And I'm back to where I started from again. But if I stay at that one location and simply change the height, I will see it change phase as a function of height. Positive at the bottom. I'm sorry, negative slope at the bottom. Positive slope at the top. And if I stay at the top and go around, I've got one, two, three, and back to the original again. So that's the 211 mode. Driving it at 3776 is the 310. No planes in the z direction, no circles in the radial direction, but there are three diameters. So I will see the phase change six times going around. So positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive. So starting from there, I get one, two, three, four, five, back to the starting point. Driving at around 4,404 hertz, I'm exciting the 311 mode. So there are three diameters in the angular direction, and there is one plane in the z direction. So if I raise, if I keep it at a point where the phase is negative, and I simply raise the microphone to the top half, it changes sign. There's a node right about midway in the z direction. But if I keep it at one location, at one height, and go around, I will go from negative, so one, two, three, four, five, and then six back to where I started from again. Driving it at 4,784 hertz, I'm at the 410 mode, so there will be four diameters in the angular direction. No planes in the z-direction, no circles in the r-direction. As I go around the circle, around the outside edge, I should, should see the phase change four times. Eight times total. Let's start with a positive slope. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven and back to the starting point again. Driving it at 6,280 hertz, I'm at the 0, 3, 0 mode. No diameter node lines, no planes in the z direction, but there are two circles in addition to the outside edge. So if I simply pull the radius at the outside edge, it's positive slope, move the microphone in, goes negative, by the time I get back to the zero, it's positive again. Positive at the middle, negative in a region, Changes to positive on the outside edge. There are lots and lots of other mode shapes in addition to the ones that I showed. I found the ones that were the easiest to find and map out with that little stick microphone to interrogate the inside. But it's a relatively easy experiment to set up for yourself if you wanted to try this. You just need a tiny microphone, a small loudspeaker, a cylindrical cavity, and an oscilloscope uh, so that you can map out and watch the mode shapes and see what you can find for yourself.